Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. I've had a couple of questions using the AppGyver API, so I wanted to walk through an updated video. I'll be using Firebase, but you can use this for other APIs as well. Firebase and AppGyver have had several updates since I've made my API video. I'll have a couple of resources in the description you can reference if you have any questions, but just wanted to walk through the new process today. So this is basically how you're going to set up and send and receive data using AppGyver and Firebase or whatever API you are using. Now before we get started, if you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you're checking in on the newest videos that I'm uploading. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you're going to need a couple of things, so to move things along quickly, I'd recommend opening at least three different pages. So first one is going to be this URL, which is going to be in the description of this video. And you'll notice there are two words in all caps. First is project name, second is collection name. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Now, I went ahead, put this in the URL and hit enter because it's just bringing us to a page that doesn't have anything. You can set it aside in Microsoft Word or Notepad or something like that. Then you'll need to go to AppGyver and get your app set up. So you can just click Create New. AppGyver's website's had a couple of changes recently. You do still have access to the free version. When you go to the main page, I believe it's in the bottom right hand corner. And then we are going to go to Firebase and we'll walk through setting all of this up from scratch. Now Firebase, because it's currently with Google, basically you can just log in with your Gmail account. Now we'll go ahead and get started. We have a blank page here. You'll see nothing special. I'm screen mirroring from my phone on the right hand side. So first thing is to get Firebase set up. So when you log into Firebase, we'll just click add project. And here we'll just put test API and we'll just put this test API two, And then you'll see down here your unique identifier for your project. And we will click continue. I'll enable Google Analytics and I'm just going to choose default account for Firebase. <clears throat> and then it's going to start creating the project, which usually takes, I'd say, close to like 50 seconds or less. So while this is happening, we can scroll through and get this set up in our AppGyver app. Now you have a couple of choices. The beauty of using APIs is you can update things like images where we could have this URL stored elsewhere. And then we can update this, which almost in real time would update the image in our application. Now, in this case, I'm just going to be using text, but you can see tons of different ways to set this up on your end. And again, check out those video links in the description to see some other options. So I'm going to put in a text box here and we're just going to pull the data over first just to show what that looks like. So you'll see this is ready. So we're going to go into Firebase and under the build section, you would think it's in storage, but we're actually going to Firestore database. Once here, it'll have a couple of different notes. Uh, now, <clears throat> a quick disclaimer, I'm not covering any security functions or features, so I'm gonna be setting a completely open database, which is not recommended, especially if you're dealing with sensitive client information. So just make sure that you're following any and all applicable rules, guidelines, laws, etc., for proper data handling. So I'm setting Everything up as default, obviously you would want to choose servers that are closer to you just to increase the speed and responsiveness and set your rules up accordingly. You can always set up your rules in this rules tab. I will make mine an open database just by putting true here and clicking publish. And then all of the changes are set up. So at this point, what we need to do is start a collection. So we'll call the collection collection one. And then in the document ID field, I'll call this actually just to make it a little bit easier. We'll just call it document one. So I'm going to add three fields. <clears throat> it's up to you how you want to format this, but I'm just going to put a couple of sample values. I'll call this field two. Obviously you want to set up good naming conventions for yours. Primary reason for that is if you have any issues in the future, you want to be able to easily identify everything. Also, you cannot come back and change these later. So we'll click save and then this screen will populate. So you'll see we have collection one, document one, and then your fields. Also, you'll see your URL up here. So now we have what we need to get this URL populated, which we will then use 
for setting up our API in AppGyver. So the only things you need to add to this URL are the project name, which is here, and then the collection name, which is here. So we will go over and get our project name first. When you're in Firebase and you have selected a couple documents on the page or collections, you'll see that this URL changes. Now, you'll notice that we have this value down here, which is also up here. And it should look familiar from earlier steps. If I'm not mistaken, it's the same value. But just to be safe, we'll pull this one. So when you look and you see project, you'll see a forward slash. And then it'll have the project name in between the forward slash and the other forward slash up here. So basically, we're grabbing everything in between. So we'll take that. We'll go over to project name and paste it in here. Now I'm going to hit enter. It's not going to bring up anything. And the reason is we still have to X uh, or enter the collection name. But this way, the URL doesn't reset when I switch pages. So now we need the collection name, which you'll see is collection one. So we will go over here. And we can just put <clears throat> collection one and hit enter. Now this should look familiar. You see we have our URL up top with name, and then we have fields. We have field one, field two, and field three. And then the values should look like the ones we entered. So you have field one, field two, and uh, field three's values in the little double quotes. So we're pulling in our information as needed, and you'll see if you need created an updated time, you can grab that as well if you need to. So we have the URL set up exactly as we need it. So now we can go to AppGyver. So first things first, you would think you would need to add your data variable here, but you cannot add your data variable until you've configured it using this data configurator. If you want, you can set up your Google Firebase connector here. I've kind of struggled to use that, especially with multiple variables in the past. So we're gonna go with the old school method where you go here, you click add data resource and REST API direct integration. Now your resource name is just the general name that helps you identify it. So I'll just call it resource one. Short description, I'll just put a bunch of random letters, although obviously you would wanna utilize this field for yourself. Now, if you see any red fields at any point, for example, here, you cannot have spaces. So you would need to make sure that you only have valid characters. Now the resource URL is the part that we need. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're going to grab everything up to the word or letter and number v1 and we're going to paste that in here so the way it should read is https all of your information up to v1 then we're going to go down to the get collection section and we're going to paste in everything from the forward slash all the way to the very end so this will complete the url now, <clears throat> you'll notice when you click out of this that this is literally just the URL we already have. And then all we're doing here is typing in the response key path the word documents. Now, when we go over to test, we click run test, and you'll see this is literally all of the data that we were just looking at in this screen here. So now we can click set schema from response. This is an very this is a very important step. If you don't do this, then it can cause issues down the road. Now, a couple of things that we need to note here. <clears throat> First, anytime you make changes in the back end, so anytime we go to Firebase and update these values, you may not see them update when you're editing the app in the UI, but they will still update in the mobile app itself. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. To get these to update, you just need to set the schema from response again. So <clears throat> we're going to get the first data variable now. Now we can click this slider. We can go to data variables, add data variable, and click resource one. You'll notice it adds in a second one. You don't need to worry about that. Just the number one, you can ignore it. Once we click save, this has now been added to the page, and we can use it like we would a page variable. Bear in mind, you need to do this step for every page in your app. So if you go to the slider and you go to data variables and you don't see it, all you need to do is click add and add it like we just did. So now when we click here, we can click on this little content and we can click on data 
variable, go to data variable, and you'll see in some cases it will be incompatible. So we have a bit of a workaround we can implement. We can click this content field, go to formula, delete everything in this box, and go to data variable. Then at this point, you'll see I only have one data variable, but this is all of the content that comes with that data variable. So if we click the first one, you'll see the example right here is what we set the schema from response as. If we click on the one with the zero in brackets, you'll see the brackets are removed and we just have the curly brackets. Created time is just the created time, etc. Now the best way to digest this, if you click on field one, you'll see everything for that field. But if you click the string value, you only get the value, which is what we want in this case. So we'll double click this and show you how this works. When we click save and we click save, you'll see now it's showing one, two, three, four, five. Now to show you that this is updating in real time, what we'll do is we'll just paste in some random letters and click update. You'll see it updates over here within a few seconds. But in the UI here, it does not update. If this bothers you, you can always just go to data and go to this tab here and go to test. And you can just run the test again and set schema from response and click save. And now you'll notice that if we were to update this, it's now showing this information. So basically, <clears throat> you can just delete it go through the steps to re-add it. In this case, we'll go to data variables, string value, and click save. And now you, if you don't have any caching issues, you'll see everything matches from screen to screen, but your values are still gonna update over here. So you don't have to set the schema from response every time. That's just if you're in the UI and you don't like that it doesn't match up with what's outside in the app itself. So now that we've covered adding in that one data resource, you can follow those steps to get the other fields. But one thing that comes to be really useful is the basically what we call the repeat. So I'll show you what this looks like. The primary way that I would recommend implementing this repeat option would be to use containers and some kind of a divider. So this may not be the most attractive way, but I'm going to make a container and then within that container, I have a text and a divider. So you'll see when I collapse the container, those two are gone. So now we're going to click on the container and we'll click repeat with. And then in this case, we are going to go to data variables, data variables, and select the data variable. And you'll notice all of a sudden we get these almost like shadow of several other of the same value. You can ignore the value that's there that is not what's actually going to be displayed. It's just showing you that we have a container that's repeating. Now, once we do this, if you click save, you would think we'd see the other valuable, other variables, but we don't. And the reason is it's repeating this document. So every time we have this document, a new one would appear. So let's walk through what that means for this application. If you wanted to display a forum, for example, which I have in my how to create a social or sharing app playlist. When we go to add a document here, we could call this document two. And then if we create the same fields, and let's just say we said, hey, it worked. And then field two and field three. Here we can put some sample values because they're not gonna be displayed. Now, when I click save, you'll see that it's repeating the exact same variable. And here's the reason for that, which we're going to fix now. We have told the system every time there's a new value, we're going to repeat, but we haven't told it what value to repeat. So now when we click in here, you'll see that it's showing, we're basically just showing the content of the data variable. So we can actually change this. And now we have this new item, which wasn't there before. When we click this item in repeat, we now choose the option we want repeated every time a new document is created. In this case, we want this string value, and we'll click save and save. And now when it updates here, you'll see it says, hey, it worked. And the idea here is, once I publish this application, 
Now, every time I add in a new document and I have field one, the name here, we could just put it worked again. And when you save it, you'll see if it populates again. Now, the tricky part with this is I would recommend having some consistency. So you'll see it worked again, so it's populating. But you're going to run into issues where you have to go in and set schema from response if you don't include the other fields. So try to be as consistent as possible. But again, just to show you, uh, you can auto ID here and then put field one and value we'll just put in some random letters and then you'll see over here how long it takes to update or if it updates so you don't need to name these in a numerical order uh, but a couple of things to note is if we were to let's just auto id this one and if we go to the field if we were to type in some random letters and then some values and then you can see if it updates here again and the idea for this is you'll notice now this time it has a problem and nothing populates. The reason for that is we did not name this field field one. So we can delete this and then it should update over here. And if you wanted that value back, you would just go in and basically just refresh and say, okay, update, change this to document one or whatever the case is. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay. And when you do things like this, it can almost appear to kind of break things. So here I'm going to have to delete the document and then you'll notice it's gone. So if I want to change any of these values at any point on the back end, I can just go in and click update. And then you'll see over here, usually within a couple of seconds, it updates. So that's really all that there is to it when it comes to this. Now, a couple use cases I wanted to discuss really quickly is if you wanted to have a forum, users can actually post to these URLs, which will render in the app. And then if you ever want to delete the post, you can just delete them and manage them from Firebase. Now, another thing to note is if you add an image, you can store this URL as your data variable. So for example, if I were to pull right here so you'll see we have this url here so i will cut this and then i'm just gonna put the word test here and click save just to show you very very briefly um or what actually may be an easier test is we're going to change this to a data variable so in this formula we'll go to data variables and you'll see we're going to pull the string value here which is just this random series of letters so we'll double click and click save and save. Now, nothing appears over here because we're not pulling a valid URL. But if we go over to our collection and if we were to update with something like this, then if that is a valid image, it'll pop up here. So in this case, not only did it update up here because this is pulling in the value, but it's updating that image here. So if you wanted to manage your images without having to update AppGyver's app in Google Play or in the Apple App Store every time, you can just manage it here. And then when I change it, this image will disappear usually within a couple of seconds because the image is just pulling from the URL. So I hope that covered any questions that you may have. Again, this was designed to be a quick crash course. If you have any other questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.